Welcome to the Monday Money Tip podcast presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sankel and we are committed to helping you win with your money. And I'm joined by Megan Hibbert, my co-host. Are you fired up today? Yes. Fired up for episode 325 and we are asking the question, can you retire without a million dollars? Hmm. Can you? Yes. Okay, bye. The end. <laughs> yes. Uh, w- this, is a, this is a big challenge because, you know, the vast majority of people are retiring without a million dollars. A million dollars. Mm-hmm. And while a million dollars cannot buy what it could buy even four years ago, it is still a very large sum of money. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to help answer this because if you're watching this, there's a good chance that you may feel behind in your preparation of retirement. And so as always with our podcast, we want to encourage you, we want to provide some real practical help for you, some right now relevant tips. And so we're going to get started by really addressing something that's really important, which is you need to define what retirement means to you. So uh, can you retire with less than a million dollars? The answer is always yes. In fact, most people are forced to retire with less than a million dollars because their body fails them. They can't continue Mm -hmm. working. And so uh, the answer is yes, but we're talking about having a good retirement, but you need to define what that good retirement looks like. So, you know, what you think about retirement is different than what I think about retirement Mm -hmm. is different than what every person listening or watching this podcast think about retirement. So when you think of retirement right now, give me the 30 second version of what you and Jordan's retirement looks like. I would like to retire if I'm not already, I would like to be at the beach and be able to retire there. I can volunteer somewhere if I want to, but I spend my time with my grandkids just relaxing. Isn't this an amazing? Like you're thinking about grandkids. That's, That's like stunning. <laughs> Logan just went to kindergarten. I know. Get fired up, little boy. <gasps> oh, I can't handle it. But one day he could be daddy. And you're never going to be more proud. You're going to be yeah. off the rails excited. Yeah. Right now, he probably doesn't love the thought of kids because yeah, the crying at our house. But <laughs> he's probably like, I'm never doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's what my oldest says. <laughs> but here's what I know. Retirement's different for everybody. For me, retirement, um, I, I'm, I'm never going to cease being productive as long as my body and mind are able. Uh, but I do want to change and redirect the activities uh, and do less of some and more of other things that I enjoy traveling. Of course, if I have grandchildren and I do want to do missions yeah. stuff with my bride. Mm-hmm. And so that's what retirement looks like for us. And it also includes having no debt, Yeah. right? So no debt at all. And that matters a lot. We'll talk about that here in a minute, because if once we've defined retirement, how can we retire with less than a million dollars? Well, it all depends on a very Famous around here, trademark formula. Do you want to share it? Yep. So it's income minus outgo equals exactly zero. Trademark. Music to my ears. It was like a symphony. Like, say it again. Maybe we have symphony going on. <laughs> income minus outgo equals exactly zero. Amazing. So that that's really important, you know, to understand this formula. There's two sides to this formula. Income minus outgo equals exactly zero. And so that's really important because income starts becoming a little limited. So we're going to really start by focusing on outgo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's give some tips, some practical tips. uh, And we'll put them one by one on the screen. Maybe you want to screenshot them. What's the first thing on reducing outgo? Yep. So to reduce outgo, you need to pay off all debt. Right. Like all of your debt. Like by the time you retire, like you're maybe you're two years away from retirement, five years away, you need to set a goal to have all your debt gone, all of it. The car debt, truck debt, credit card debt. It, I mean, maybe you need to sell some things. Maybe you need to downsize the house so you can have it paid off. But ideally, you would have a paid for house even, ideally. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you're, maybe, you, maybe your retirement includes living in a, a, a rental, uh, an apartment complex that you enjoy living at. Mm. Um, but- Ideally, in if you're retiring with far less than a million dollars, ideally you'd have paid for a house because 
you know, you're lowering your outgo to the lowest, lowest number. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. Okay. And then there's another tip part here on reducing outgo. Yeah. So adjust to retirement income a couple of years before you actually retire. Yeah. So, you you want to adjust yeah. to it. So it allows you to feel it. So you know, oh, this is what's going to feel like right. while you still have a little bit of extra. And then you can identify specific challenges that you feel like you might yeah. feel then. So you have time to adjust. And then you can bank the difference so that you have a little bit of extra. Yeah. Cost. If you dial it back, your spending, your outgo, and you get that retirement budget and you're living on it while still producing income up here, then you can bank that difference while discovering all the things that might need to change to shift mm -hmm. to be able to fund it. And you may find out, hey, I thought I could live without this. Uh, turns out I really want that. <laughs> um, and I don't know about you, but lots and lots of... Uh, people that are retired love to go out to eat and there's a lot of restaurants that cater to senior citizens and give them great discounts mm -hmm. and have early meals and all that so reduce your outgo because every dollar you reduce in your monthly outgo allows whatever you have accrued in your savings your investments to go farther okay it, it, it's funny to me like i don't understand why it's always this like misnomer that older retired people always eat at like 4 30 yeah do is that like... Yeah, no, I, it's a requirement. Is, yeah, you're trained by our... You're in retirement, you have to... Yeah, like, you have to eat. Like, both my parents are retired, and they eat... It's like 7.30 when they eat. Like, okay. they eat late. Yeah, but they're young retirees. But I'm just like... They're that, active that is retirees. True. They are very... Yeah. But I'm just like, if I eat at 4.30, by like 8, I'm hungry again. Well, the, the people that eat at 4.30 are asleep at 8 p.m. <laughs> but I'm just curious, like, if you're retired and you eat early... Do you get hungry again, or are you just like, I'm hungry, I'm going to go to bed? This is like, this I, is like, an off-the-rails discussion that let me know. needs to become a podcast episode, but people need to write this. Why Why do uh, elderly people eat at 4.30 in the afternoon? Is this is going to be a podcast episode. Drink it'll misnomer. It'll be life-changing. Like, we don't do that. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I need to know. I just, I'm like just so curious. I appreciate you dragging us into the ditch. Yeah. Normally, I'm dragging us into the ditch. You're, you're taking Coming us. Out. There's the next, a rabbit trail. The next thing. So we, we're working on outgo, reduce it. Second yeah. thing is what? Supplemental income. So yeah. how can you produce additional income during your retirement years? A lot of people who are what they feel behind on their retirement savings, they 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 supplement their income. They continue doing some work. So is there a job that you can work that produces some additional income? Do you have a hobby that you enjoy that you could use to produce income? Like I know people do woodworking and crafting and mm -hmm. they also enjoy going to festivals. So they actually take their little mm -hmm. stuff and sell stuff at festivals. That way they can go to different festivals or a little food yeah. truck. Or maybe you love spending time at Lowe's and Home Depot. Well, maybe you could work there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and a lot, uh, and, and, or Ace Hardware. Yeah. You know, with our local Ace Hardware is filled with people that are of retirement age. Yes. But they loved what they did. A lot of them were carpenters, mm -hmm. construction people, and they, they're days is the place with the helpful hardware folks right because they're helpful there we go yeah so let's give an example i'm going to put this on the screen some numbers because imagine you have a family that has current after-tax family income of six thousand dollars a month so after all tax paid you know family income 6k social security after tax family income is expected to be 3k okay so that's a punch in the face of half your income mm -hmm. okay and let's say you have $225,000 in your retirement account. Mm -hmm. Okay. You do not have a million. You do not have half a million. You don't even have a quarter million. You have two and a quarter hundred thousand, 225,000. <laughs> so the current, let's say your current monthly expenses total 5,500 bucks. That's house payment, principal and interest. All that is in there. But let's say your house payment, that principal and interest portion is 1,500 of that. So of your $5,500 a month in expenses, 1500 is for your house. Okay. So if you pay that off, you'll automatically lower your monthly outgo mm -hmm. to 4000 4, You currently owe 30000 on the house. If you, you, this person wants to retire in two years, by paying off the house, the family's monthly expenses are lowered to 4000 a month. And by doing a novel trick called retooling the budget, <laughs> the family finds they can save an additional 250000 a month. You know, this is where they dump streaming services, change cable providers, or ditch it. You know, they do different things. Now they need, you know, 3750 a month. Mm -hmm. So the gap to get to where they need to be 
$4,500. Uh, well, no, they, they, they have, I said 4,500. They need 3,750. They're getting 3,000 social security. The gap is 750 a month. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Tracking. Yep. 750 a month is 9,000 a year. Are we on track? Not on track. Okay, I want to make sure because people are listening. They can't always see the numbers. So how do you fund the gap? Well, if the retirement account grows at 4% a year, 4% of 225,000 is roughly 9,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So that's if it's in locked in CD making 4%. And let's say they choose to only withdraw 4,500 a year. Mm -hmm. So that's 375 a month. And they, they say, hey, I can earn 375 a month doing my odd job, my hobby stuff. Mm -hmm. And they can plug the gap. So a lot of people fund the gap by doing drawdowns of their of their retirement savings and by earning a little extra, you know, having some side income during retirement. Mm -hmm. So I think the big question for everyone listening is what does that word retirement look like for you? Because the math will not matter until you can clearly define or have a good idea of right. what that retirement looks like. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know I'm going to need this much if you don't know what you want your life to look like. like. Yeah, you've got to know that. Your life, like for me, my life at the beach would look different cost-wise than my life in North Carolina where I'm living now. Yeah. Versus if I want to retire at the mountains or I want to retire and I want to buy a private island. Like, yeah. You know? Like, like right now, different. my goal <laughs> is to pine box it out of my house. Yeah. that I live in right now. 11, 11 acres, house, barn, pool. You know, my my objective right now is that I would pine box it out, which means I'm hauled out in a pine box. Mm -hmm. I keel over the end, okay? So oh, that could change. If the Lord gives me 20 more years of life and I'm 70, mm -hmm. my goal may change. I may say, you know what? This house is too big. I'm ready to hand this off to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we make another decision. But right now we've de defined what retirement looks like, house paid off, everything paid off, and in position to where we can thrive on far less than a million dollars accrued in a retirement account. And uh, that's the walkaway point, is a lot of people think that they need way more than they actually need to actually thrive in retirement. But that is only the case if you enter into retirement, we're having lowered your cost of living substantially mm -hmm. by getting rid of unwanted debt. Yeah. And fair. you can do it. Yeah. So hopefully that was helpful. Any other tips you want to share, share it in the comments. Uh, any last thought you'd like to share, Megan? I mean, I'm just curious to see what are your retirement plans? Like, what do you, when you think retirement, what do you envision that being? Yeah. Does it include a beach? Does it include the mountains? Travel? Missions? Yeah. Working till you die? What does retirement look like for you? We love being able to serve you guys, helping you win with your money and live a fully funded life. We'll see you next week, Monday, for another Monday Money Tip. Get fired up. Hey, thanks for watching this video. There's a lot more content on our website. We got a few of them linked right here and we got a subscription link as well. We would be so honored if you would click that like and subscribe button and go learn some additional stuff so that you can live your fully funded life.